So I've had some feedback that people are finding it hard to use the website and they don't sort of understand how it's uh, working. So I just thought I'd talk you through it now in this very short video. I want to start off though by just explaining where I'm coming from in terms of how I think about syllabus and um, curriculum design. Um, when we think about the curriculum that you're studying at university in any module, we can break it down into separate bits. So um, going starting from the bottom right hand corner, you have what we can refer to as your quantitative learning. So this is quite the sort of shallow learning, the very basic stuff, the facts that you need to know. And then what we try and do in particular university level is then stretch you into what deeper qualitative learning. So you're understanding some of the deeper theoretical concepts that underpin some of those facts. And then in particularly in the workshops in this module, we think about applied learning. So getting you to take that um, theoretical and fact based knowledge and apply it to the real world and understand why that knowledge is useful and interesting. And then in the end, when we come to assessment, the assessment is designed to measure how well you've done at achieving the learning outcomes in these different areas. If this module had been delivered as a training module online, then you might to be able to do all of these four things simultaneously. There might be some short assessments for you to do as you go along, and then you dip into different levels of learning as you went along through it. And it would all be available as one package for you to um, engage with in at one go. Now, because this is delivered in a university, we have a slightly different um, way of delivering and thinking about our learning, particularly uh, that's driven by the semester structure and the university calendar and basically the entire university calendar hangs off the date of graduation ceremonies. We have a more linear model. So rather than, although we have these different types of learning, we break this down into different topics that then build on top of one another. And then at the end, you have the assessment. So you're going from one topic to the next topic to the next topic to the next topic. And through the delivery of lectures and all the learning materials, we get you to engage in different depths of learning. And then we assess these towards the end of the semester. So that's the, the thinking behind the, the way the curriculum is structured for SBCU 913. I now want to talk about how then this is delivered through the website and also show you some practical tools to help you get um, around the website and navigate the website. So let's move on there. So the website is a blog and if you don't, if you've never seen the blog before, it's just a <clears throat> way of delivering uh, material in a linear fashion. So basically, the topmost post is the most recent one. This is my own post, my own blog, where I talk about my research. So that's the most uh, recent blog. I've not done one for a while. Um, and then if you scroll down, there's earlier uh, blog posts. So you can see it's a sequential fashion. So like the lectures on campus, I am delivering these blog posts in a sequential fashion. My blog here for my uh, my research is a very bog standard blog or text based. This could have been a way for me to deliver SPCU 913, but I've chosen to have a, a mixture of formats. So let's move on to SPCU 913 then. So as I say, it's a blog like any other. So that's Moral Hazard and Just Desserts. That was last week's lecture. And that's the first post here. So that's the most recent one. And as we go down, we've got older posts as they go through. So these posts are going to roll out throughout semester in the same way that I deliver the lectures. So I can't deliver all the lectures in one 10 hour block. I deliver them in one hour blocks each week. It's the same with these blog posts. They will come out a week on a week basis. And it's just up to you to dip in and read them. And the website also has what's called infinity scrolling. So if you just keep going as the semester progresses, it'll just scroll down or further, further and further until you get to know more posts at the bottom. So that's the basic structure of it. That's how it's set out. And you might now be thinking, well, how do I catch up with uh, something I've missed? Or uh, how do I uh, find something when I'm doing my, my essay that I might have missed before? Well, there's two key ways to do this. One is through the categories and tags, and the other one is through the search feature. 
Now to use the categories and tags, the easiest way to do that is to click on this button here, which is the filters. And then you'll find there's a drop down menu for the categories. So say if you're doing the lecture number one, you might be interested in the history. And then it says four matching posts show, and it will show you uh, the search results there of, and let's see, there you go. So <clears throat> the other way to do it might be, oops, sorry, is by tags. So I've in all categories. So I have created a tag on the essays. If you click that, click show, and that gives you two or posts about the essays. Now, the other thing you might want to do, you might sort of be think, well, um, I'm sure I uh, remember reading something about that, but I can't quite, I can't remember the tags for it. So you can just use a search for function. So here I will put in study skills as the search term. Let's see what I've got there. Click search and, oh, nope, nothing. Try again. Okay, let's try essay question. There we go. So there are at least six, there are three posts and three pages with the uh, essay questions results. So if we go on, just to explain here now, what's the difference between a post and a page? So posts appear on that first page in the sequential um, manner. So here are the posts down here, but then there's also these things called pages, and these are lingering in the background, and they'll always be there. And this is a key thing. I've created three of these, so you can find them by searching for essay questions, and they are on each essay question. So essay question one, let's open that. So there we go. Um, essay question one, and these are set up for you just to discuss the essay questions however you like. And in particular, these have got the comments switched on, so you can then talk amongst yourselves in the comment section. I might chip in if I want, feel like I should do um, at the bottom uh, to help you and guide the discussion. Now, as you'll see, it's anonymous commenting. So unless I made a little bit of an uh, administrative uh, boob, and if I do, email me and let me know, you should not be able to see who's commenting on these. You will know it's you, but you won't be able to see anybody else's name. I can, as the administrator, just so in case there's anything bad happens, I can go in and sort it out. But generally, um, you will not be able to see who is commenting. So that means you can ask the stupid question down in the bottom. Nobody's going to know it's you. So you can go, apart from me, and I don't care, really. Um, so you go ahead, ask the question down there, and I will try do my best to answer it. Or hopefully, one of you will answer it. I really want to get some discussion going, because a lot of the questions I get asked about the essays, you know the answers yourselves. And I know if you talk amongst yourselves, you'll be able to answer the questions between you. So the other thing just to note as well, to, to make it easy to navigate, whenever somebody updates anything on the site, the little globe here will turn red. And if you click on that, that will come up as and tell you what's been most uh, recently updated. So you'll have there's one new comment on the post uh, there, and there's two new posts as well. So more has and just desserts. That's the lecture. Now I'm bringing up the lecture here as well because I could have done this just by recording the lectures that I did last year and on. Listen again, like I'm doing here on my computer and uploading them onto the site. The trouble is lectures are not designed to be listened to in this way. Um, I do my lectures to be done in a lecture theatre. Part of me prancing around the Logie Lecture Theatre is my act. And it's why it's try, why, how I try and make the lectures interesting. Just listening to endless lectures on a blog is not going to be that, much in, that, that, that interesting. So therefore, you'll see a range of different ways of uh, I am teaching you in the blog. So already, if you go back to the home page of the history of the welfare state, we've got a first example of these. So this is a podcast. So there we go. There's my mum listening. And if you just click play, there you go. You can listen to my mum talking about the welfare state. And as ever, with that, you can just right click, save as, and save save that document yourself. So, um, 
The other one, there'll be listicles later in semester. I've not got one to show you yet, but there will be one coming out um, this week. And the other element of it are just actually just standard blog posts. So if you'll see here on Scottish Welfare System, which I did the other day, there we go. I That was just a fairly bog standard, very short blog post with some links in it there for you to follow and for you to read. And there'll be quite a few of those coming up through semester. So that's how this will work. Hopefully that will have helped you navigate around. Actually, just before I sign off, one final thing as well. If you click on there, any files of any, any of the uploads there, you can get them here. So any of the videos, podcasts, easy way to access them is click on files there. And if you want to know what any of these side menus do, just click I there. And also, I really would encourage you to start sharing things. Try and engage. If you use Instagram and Twitter, follow me on Twitter at SBCU913. On Instagram, use the hashtag SBCU913. There's a Facebook page has been set up by the course rep. So really do, do share things yourselves online. Get engaged in the module and you'll do better. So with that, I will wrap up and enjoy the rest of the module.